30 days out, everybody. Welcome to the final month. Energy is low, hunger is high, and my collection of rice cakes is at maximum. So yeah, guys, uh, I wanted to do kind of like a full day, not, a, not just a full day of eating, but like a full day of life. I kind of want to walk you guys through it today because right now, this to me, these last few weeks, this is the most important thing in my personal case and in my opinion that is going to affect your physique. It's not the stuff that you do 60 or 90 days out because if you kind of mess up and you fuck up, it's okay because you still have time to turn it around. And it's not necessarily the final week. If you look like crap seven days out, there's nothing you can do you know, to fix it, it's too late. Or if you look great, as long as you don't do something stupid like going on a McDonald's binge, you're probably going to be okay. But two, three, four weeks out, that's kind of the big deal because right now it's still not too late to kind of like change your physique for the better or for the worse. And uh, I actually waited this morning, I've been kind of fluctuating in like the 177, 178 range. Yeah, these last few pounds, this is where I really need to dig deep and I wanna, I wanna kind of walk you guys uh, through that today. And also, I wanna kind of give you some like, tips and tricks. People always ask me, like they, I always get messages and DMs and comments saying like, Igor, I'm trying to lose weight, do you have any, do you have any tips or tricks? And 90% of the time I'm like, no, you just eat less, move more. It's not, you know, it's not that complicated. It's not rocket science. But today we're doing that. Today I'm actually gonna give you some, just like a few kind of like, just as we go along, there's a few minor things which I just kind of instinctively do because I've learned over 14 years of doing this through five competitions. But there's some things that I've instinctively started doing which I think a lot of you guys out there, some small, some big, which can definitely help you. But on that note, after my initial 17 minute tangent, guys, it's time for uh, the first meal of the day. And I'm actually gonna be having a beautiful, nice uh, cup of Fucking nothing! But that being said, I still do have a morning cup of coffee. By the way, watch this. This is going to be, this is going to blow your mind. This is the coolest thing ever, ready? Is that fucking awesome? Or what? Yeah, yeah, this is the best six bucks I ever spent. All right, guys, workout commentary, let's go. Today we got a chest workout, but I'm not gonna walk you through like rep by rep, set by set, because instead I wanna talk about more of a general concept with regards to training, specifically when dieting down. And it's something which I kinda like reached a crossroads recently over the last month or so when I had to kind of decide what to do. And uh, what I'm talking about is problems related to decreasing uh, volume because you're trying to train like a big fucking man and lift heavy weight that you used to. For example, in my in my case, I actually, the last time I did a chest workout, I think you guys saw on my channel, I was talking about how I'm really trying to hit 225 uh, on the incline bench press and maintain what I used to do, which was I think was around three to four sets of eight reps. And I was trying my best to keep up with that. And I kind of had a little bit of setbacks uh, related to the strength loss that comes with 99% of us you know, unless we have 99th percentile genetics, or let's be perfectly fucking honest, are on steroids. The rest of us, you know, not genetically elite, natural guys, yeah, when you're dieting down, low carbs, low fat, low, I don't care what you're doing, if you're low calorie, you're gonna experience at least some level of strength loss. And eventually, that is going to gravitate to the point where you are reducing your volume. Now, some volume loss at the expense of maintaining strength and, and trying to really train with a good level of intensity is not a big deal. 10, 15, 20%, it's, it's not the end of the world. But, and this is one thing which I kinda like wanna give you guys a nice simple way of looking at it with some numbers because you know your boy has to throw in, you know, I can't do a single vlog without at least some formulas or calculations or something. So I'm gonna call this the 30-10 rule. And uh, essentially, if you get to a point where you are trying to lift the same weight that you used to when you were bigger and stronger, such as in my case, when I was bulked up, I was 200 pounds, I was lifting like, you know, way more, I was eating like 3000 plus calories. If you get to a point where trying to lift that same weight, you are forced to decrease because you're getting less and less reps per set on a certain, on a certain exercise, you have decreased by 30 or more percent. Unfortunately, it's become a bit too much. And I think at this point, it may be time to consider decreasing 
uh, the weight on that specific exercise by the other side of the rule, 10. So once you've lost more than 30% of volume, number of reps, it's time to decrease the weights in order to actually preserve that volume. By the way, holy shit, sorry, I have to stop. Wow, even for me, that is uh, that is an intense lifting face. That's, that's kind of scary. Well, I mean, it is Halloween month, right? So I guess it fits accordingly. But for example, let's just give you a nice real world, you know, application of this. Let's say you got someone lifting 300 pounds on the squat and they do three sets of 10 and uh, this comes out to a total volume, or in this case, total reps of 30. Now, let's say this guy starts dieting, he goes down 20, 25 pounds, he's looking leaner, he's looking better, but with that is unfortunately going to come decreased strength. And if he tries to lift the same weight, he goes from 10, 10, 10, down to like eight, six, maybe even down to four on your final rep. Now, he feels like a big man because he's still lifting, you know, he's looking better, but he's still lifting the weight that he used to. And that's awesome because you've maintained workout intensity. And by that, I mean weight. And that's great. But the problem is it came at the expense of 40% of his volume in this case. He went from 30 total reps to 18. Now, some volume loss is usually inevitable and it's okay. And it, sometimes it's a necessary sacrifice to actually keep on lifting hard and good. And, you know, most of us are not going to be able to lift for an hour and a half with crazy high volume when we're dieting. That's expected. That's, that's acceptable. But in this case, you know, once you've crossed that barrier, it's, it's too much. It's time to drop. And that's pretty much what I experienced, which kind of sucks, especially from an ego standpoint. Eventually got to a point where I had to decrease it. I lowered it down to 185, which isn't that big of a deal. It's only 15% drop in weight. But um, in doing so, number one, it's way safer because I'm not trying to lift too much weight with less strength while I'm dieting, especially a dumb idea. Like last thing I want to do is get injured 30 days out from a show. And number two, it has allowed me to maintain a pretty decent overall volume. For example, in this case, I got around 40 reps in total uh, at 185. And I personally, for me, 40 reps at 185 is probably better than if I were to like kind of like risk injury and lift 225 and get like, I don't know, like 18 crappy reps at like, okay, I'm going to do like six, four, three, two. It's just eventually got to a point where it's not worth it. But the last thing I want to mention is uh, kind of like a quick physique update. Last time you guys saw me do a physique update, I was 60 days out. This is now 30 days out. I lost around four or five pounds. And I got to be honest, guys, I'm, I'm pretty happy with this. I would say on a scale of one to 10, 10 being like, oh my God, this is the best I've ever looked. I'm going to smoke this show. This is like an eight. It's, it's pretty good. It's not perfect because obviously I can't step on stage like this. I mean, I could, but I probably wouldn't place like, you know, top three or top one, which is definitely what I'm, you know, gunning for this time around. I mean, I came second in 2016. I came third in 2017. And, you know, this year, after taking a full two years off from competing, this year to come first place in my class, I think I have a reasonable shot at it. This, this is the most I've been excited for a competition in a long time and I can't fucking wait to see because I'm so close. Honestly, guys, if you compare me to where I was around like one month out, give or take, back in 2016, I think I'm way ahead. I know I have the math to prove it that I'm like three or four pounds ahead of, this is like what you guys are seeing back in 2016. This is me like around five weeks out. I was like 181. So right now I'm four pounds down with additional lean body mass from then, which means I'm leaner, I'm bigger at around the same four-ish weeks out. So if I went from looking like that to this, in a matter of like, this is pretty much like four weeks because this is me one week before the show, like six days out. And I'm so much further along this time around this year than I think I could make up the difference. You know, if I'm like just a few percent away from the best I've ever looked, I think I can make that up and then some you know, make up the difference to get to back to where the best I've ever been and then use the additional time because I'm ahead of schedule to be even a little bit better than that and come in one, two, three percent than the best I have ever looked, bigger, leaner, and then I guess I'll be living up to the name of this series that will truly be a 100% ascension, even if it's by a little bit. And uh, yeah, that'll make me happy. So guys, uh, you know, forgive me if I'm kind of like rambling and I'm kind of, but I'm excited because this, this conditioning, this size, this everything, four weeks out is the, the best that I have looked, I think, at this time from a show. And, uh, and with more lean muscle mass from the additional two-year off-season that I just took, yeah, I'm pretty, uh, I'm pretty fucking exciting. That's actually one of the reasons why, which kind of leads me to the next clip. I got so pumped up from the way I looked in the mirror. I'm like, I'm, I'm so close. I could, I could taste it. I just need a few more pounds of fat loss. I, uh, I actually overdid it a little bit on the fasting, and I told myself, yeah, my first meal of the day will be after my workout, three, three thirty. I took a little bit further than that.
first meal of the day, all the way, well, sort of, sort of the first meal of the day, I'll explain in a sec, all the way at 6 p.m. I said earlier, like, yeah, I fast until like 3, four, maybe like 4 o'clock, not today, I took it pretty damn far. She wants to play. Uh, but not fully, because I actually did eat something after my workout. What I actually had is technically my first meal of the day it was like earlier, around like two-ish hours ago, it was after my workout, and it was just protein and water. That's it. And that's, that's so technically, like, did I break my fast? Yes, but I didn't consume a single carb, a single, like, fat, nothing, right? That was like the real meal. I actually had uh, this. I'm, I'm going to probably do a full video on this in the future. I don't want to, you know, dilly dally about this too much. I might do a full supplement breakdown video. This is uh, the new one from my protein. It's their clear way. And I know a lot of you guys are going to say, like, well, you're just saying it because you're sponsored by them. I've been sponsored by them for years. I have never said this. They don't, I have no requirement to say this. This is the best shit. I have ever consumed in my entire life because every other pro like look I don't like protein okay like the best protein ever by any company taste wise was like a six out of ten I don't really like milk I don't like milkshakes so all protein for me is either garbage or it's like it's okay it's bearable this shit I don't know what they did to the point where I need to like contact them and be like no seriously is this true like is this actually you know the, the nutrition label is this legit because I find it hard to believe because you literally you pour it in you shake it up you let it sit for like a minute or two I like to do it in the fridge so it cools down and I thought like you say clear but is it actually no it really is it's like Gatorade or something I don't want to go on a ramble but god damn like for me personally for my taste buds it's a uh, it's a game changer either way but moving on first meal of the day as we know you know i'm doing this whole kind of like you know moderately high protein not high fat but higher fat than in previous years and relatively low not keto but relatively low carb diet so what i've decided to do i'm like i'm not a fancy chef i'm not a fancy i'm not going to be sitting here like yeah guys full day of eating nice and quick be right back doing 45 minutes of seven different pans and doing all this crazy shit. at the same time i don't want to just go out and eat if it's like a 30, $40 meal, because that doesn't really pertain to a lot of you guys out there. I like to do these full day of eatings that's kind of like relatable. It's quick, it's easy, it's cheap, and it's not like you going out spending 40 bucks on some random restaurant, which 90% of you guys don't have access to, depending on what city you're in, what country you're in, all of those things. So some of you guys out there, especially if you're like health nuts, you might be like, but Igor, the preservatives, the frozen food, the blah, 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 blah. I, no, okay, right now I'm in contest prep. All I care about is macros. I don't give crap about, about that other stuff. I don't necessarily care. What I'm going to be doing is we got one of these kind of like frozen meal kind of thingies. I like these a lot. It's by Stouffer's. I don't know if they have that in the States, but it's nice. It's simple. It's got a little bit more protein. It's funny how like for the average individual, like the typical North American, it's like, wow, high protein, 24 grams, which for us is like one protein bar. So carbs wise, that's it. That's pretty much all I need. But the two things that it's missing is number one, we need uh, another protein source because that's that's nowhere near enough. And what we got, got myself a steak. This is like a ribeye steak, rib steak, whatever you want to call it. Good amount of protein, definitely a decent amount of fat. But one thing I actually do these days, guys, like even though I am trying to get like more fat than I have in the past, I'm not going to have like a crazy amount because my daily target today is like 75, 78 grams of fat. It's not like 200. I'm not keto. So what I actually do is even though I'm having a red meat kind of like fattier cut of steak, I actually cut like this stuff. You're gonna see like I'm gonna throw up on screen right now. I actually cut this stuff off. It's still fatter than like chicken breast or like super lean steak, but it's not like, you know, otherwise this would be like what? Like 40, 45 grams of fat, which is pretty much half my daily intake. It's a bit much. So we got the carbs, we got the protein. And the last thing is we just need some additional vegetables just from a health standpoint, like micronutrients, uh, you know, vitamins, minerals, fiber, and also from like a filling standpoint, it's always a good idea to eat more vegetables. As long as it's not like the high calorie stuff, high calorie vegetables would be things like corn, uh, avocados, sweet potatoes, potatoes, uh, things of that nature. But especially kind of like the not fun vegetables, the ones that taste like you're pretty much eating like fiber and water. So like in this case, like beans, green beans, stuff like that. You can almost have to like, essentially like look, this whole thing, probably has like what, like 200 calories. So even if I have like, like two handfuls, it's gonna be like 60 calories. And most of it's coming from just like fiber, which is nowhere near the same as like regular carbs or especially sugar. So we got some carbs, lots of veggies, lots of protein, a bit of fats. And uh, for a snack, I haven't decided what I'm gonna have, but I might literally have just like two chocolate chip rice cakes just to get a little bit of 
a little bit of carbs. Like a month ago, I was still being like, yeah, I'll have like an ice cream. I'll have like, I'll have like a Kit Kat. I'll have some of that good stuff. And now I'm like, <laughs> caramel rice cake. Enjoy your eight carbs. Fuck my life. Also guys, one more thing about this meal, which I think is very important. And this is, you know, yet again, another kind of like a little bit of a tip. This is a place where so many people, you know, I, I coach a lot of people and I see this mistake being made over and over again. These little secret calories, you know, these inconspicuous calories, as I like to call them, from things like sauces or cooking oils, I'm sorry, but yes, you do have to track it. Everything that goes in your mouth, which has any amount of calories. I mean, you can ignore things like spinach, which has like literally nothing or celery, which may as well be just like water. But if it has a little bit more, especially, you know, the sugar and carbs and ketchup and sauces or the fat found in oils, it does add up. Let's say you have two meals a day where you cook meat. You have like, a, you know, a tablespoon or something of ketchup on side of those. And then you also have, you know, you, you use cooking oils, in my case, olive oil. That can add up to an extra 150, 200 or more calories on a daily basis. And if you only have like a 300 calorie deficit, let's say you're dieting at a, at a reasonable pace, well you pretty much wiped away that entire calorie deficit without even realizing it, without even tracking it. So guys, another big tip where if you are dieting, especially if you're taking it relatively seriously, be very cautious of cooking oils, sauces, and other kind of little secret inconspicuous calories, you know, things that do have, you know, an, a metabolic effect on you, but aren't necessarily classical food. All right, guys, uh, having a little bit of a snack. So. As I said earlier, I was gonna do the the rice cakes. It's kind of like caramel chocolate chip. I'm like, that's okay, but I'm like, you know what? I want something a little bit more special. Plus, I really need some additional help hitting my protein intake. We're doing a little bit of Greek yogurt. Now, this is kind of like, I've done this in the past. It's a little bit of like, uh, this is my uh, diet friendly alternative to something like Froyo or like frozen yogurt. What I do actually is I'm in this case doing two different yogurts. One is kind of like a very standard. This is just 2% uh, plain. It's got like, a lot of protein, you know, not too many carbs. I went with the flavorless one. Then I also add in this. Now, I don't know if you guys have this in, you know, wherever you guys are watching this all over the world, but this is like the best thing ever. This, for 100 grams, it's 35 calories, which is nothing. I mean, this whole thing is like, what, two, 250 calories? And this is like, what, like a pound more? A pound of yogurt, a pound of food? So this kind of adds the flavor. And then we're gonna be adding, this is 100 grams of blueberries, which I washed and I did weigh it out. And then we got our two chocolatey caramel rice cake kind of thing. So the way that I kind of do it is I actually, like you can kind of just stick it in there, but what I actually like to do is kind of just like, just crunch it up in there. And then I'll probably add like, let's see, it's around like 140 plus whatever's on this spoon. That's around 150 probably add like another maybe 150. And then you mix it all up. And then what you're left with essentially is a relatively high protein, especially, for, you know, considering it's not a supplement or a meat source. It's got some carbs in there, but it's not that much. And it's a good thing that one of them is a fruit slash, slash vegetable. Pretty decent uh, snack and really kind of hits the spot, especially when it's a little bit late. You're kind of really craving like some sweetness or something. You want that froyo, you want this, you want that. This way it's kind of like it's sweet, but it's got some protein and it doesn't obliterate your calories. And if I can fit this in on like a 2000 calorie per day diet, you guys out there with decent metabolisms, not, you know, competing at a show in a matter of weeks. Uh, yeah, you could definitely do it too. Welcome to meal number two. Very creative, exciting, unique meal. It's called, I looked this up online by the way. It's, it's I believe it's French. It's called omelette. Yeah, guys, like when it comes to eating like a diet that's kind of like decent in protein, a bit more in fat, especially coming from like, you know, the eggs and the yolks and a little bit of that, the cheese, and relatively, or in this case, pretty damn low in carbs, nothing really beats. Just like, like a big uh, omelet. Also, one of the really good things about it is that it's just so high volume. A big thing, which uh, I'm a big proponent of, uh, when it comes to trying to like diet, this isn't even specifically related to like low carb or high fat or whatever nutritional approach or strategy you are doing when it comes to uh, dieting down, you want to maximize your feeling of like satiation and you know, satisfaction and just fullness and minimize your calories. I mean, what you guys are gonna see at the end in a few minutes is we're gonna have like this big ass massive omelet, which is gonna be just like, you know, it's salty, it's, 
it's savory, it's warm, it's cheesy, it's, you know, it's decent in terms of macros, and it's gonna fill me up, but it's gonna be like, what, three, four, five hundred calories at the very most? It's not that exciting, and it's kind of weird to have uh, an omelet, a breakfast food at 10.37 in the evening. Fuck it, if it works, it works. I'm, uh, I'm not complaining. So step one is get all your fancy ingredients together. I like to personally, I'm a big fan of onion, which I know my girlfriend likes so much, it. right, right, babe? Get it away. She, I don't know, I think it's like the Russian thing in me, like the Eastern European, we're big on like, just kind of like these like strong flavored, for a strong man. Moving on, we have mushrooms, and uh, we have a little bit of turkey just to add some additional uh, additional protein, just two turkey slices, and then we have a little bit of cheese just to give it like a little bit more salt and the, that chewy, savory uh, flavor. And also the main, the piece de resistance is obviously, we've got two different kinds of eggs coming here. We got number one, we got just uh, standard egg whites to uh, maximize the protein, and then we have, uh, this is three extra large, uh, free, free range, um, eggs all in here. By the way, I did actually like I counted out the eggs and I weighed out the protein. I had like I had like 200, like 204 grams of the actual egg whites um, all in here. By the way, I'm not an expert on this kind of stuff. I did recently kind of like look into what the difference is between like regular versus free range and free run eggs. And despite, you know, in, in addition to like the supposed like, you know, health differences, one is like more organic or healthy, all that stuff. I have read that free range essentially means that like the chickens are allowed to like, from what I understand, have like a little bit of, it's called a pasture, where they have like, you know, some actual outdoor time. I'm thinking like, look, if I can spend a few extra bucks and maybe the animals I eat have a little bit of a better life, you know, like in this case they have, you know, they get some access to the outdoors or this or that, they actually have better conditions as opposed to like some of the crap I've seen in terms, of, you know, where the animals are just in like really, really bad living conditions. I've seen some of these like, behind the scenes, hidden camera footage. I thought like, I mean, hopefully that's the case here. Maybe this is a scam too, I, I don't know. But if I can spend a few extra bucks and have the peace of mind that the animals, or in this case, the eggs I'm eating, didn't come from chickens, which live in absolute shit conditions, extra two or three dollars is is a small price to pay. Or maybe I'm wrong. If that's the case, if you guys know more about this, feel free to comment down below. I, I would love to learn more, or send me a YouTube link, or something where I can learn more about um, this kind of stuff. Either way, step one, gather the ingredients is done. Step two, hell yeah. High protein, decent amount of fat, low carb. Bon appetit, bitches. That's right, I'm back on the bandwagon. Season two or chapter two, whatever the hell it's called. Screw it, I'm in. Okay guys, the final totals for the end of the day are 1,991 calories, which by the way is fantastic. It's almost like the most important thing. When it comes to weight loss, calories, you know, it truly is the king. Everything else to a certain extent is almost kind of like a second priority. Uh, carbs and fat are a tiny little bit over um, their respective targets, but with such minor single digit you know, fluctuations, it's essentially negligible at that point. Similar case with protein where it's a little bit under, but still well above, you know, that standard one gram of protein per pound of body weight common targets. Also, one more extra thing I want to mention. Uh, today, I did not do any cardio. Today was an off day because I did like cardio the previous three days. So I felt my body needed a little bit of rest, which is why you're seeing no actual uh, manipulations of these calorie numbers. They're not affected in any way by, uh, by cardio, uh, specifically today. Either way, I'm going to end this video before it turns into a 40 minute ramble. I think it's already long enough. As always, guys, I appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you for watching this video. We are 30 days out. Things are going to get, uh, they're going to get interesting these next four weeks. And, uh, I'm excited to show you that.